So hi everyone, my name is Matt. Um, my journey of the armoring started in 2010 and, um, and I was kind of not really knowing what I was signing up for. And in this early ages, um, that was just like, how could the practitioner cause as much pain as they possibly could, uh, that I was starting to cry and then obey to the power of the practitioner. And it was good to cry and just like to go along and endure to the pain. But that was um, not really, you know, empowering me. And uh, and then I have been in other de-armoring schools or other de-armoring scenarios. That was just like a nightmare shambul where you had five people kind of poking every spot on the on another person that they possibly could to break through their armor to get them vulnerable where people kind of felt abused afterwards so that was the early stages of the armoring and um, I came across in 2014 about this consent work that you see here I think consent is sexy some people think it's um, boring I think consent is allowing people to get into the armoring and have the experience that they choose to have so since 2014 till now a lot of stuff has been happening and um, uh, um, I think that the armoring is one of the most potent and profound ways of um, getting your body in an ecstatic state, what the natural um, expression is, just like everything that's between you and God uh, in, in your um, expression of oneness. You know, when we are born, we are all complete there's nothing wrong there's no fixing needed in each and one of us and then we just like uh, grow up in a certain conditioning you know in society family school wherever we go and then we need to learn to adapt ourselves to this environment and based on this environment and our way of dealing with that we created different protection mechanisms shields armors you know and all these armors create different psychological, emotional, and physical um, um, blockages, if you want to say so. So different different ways of behaviors, different ways of expressing ourselves. So the way how I see the armoring today is finding into the truth of who I am as an individual and allowing myself to be mirrored in that where I'm not in connection with God, like DM said. So when we come in together in this field of um, uh, the armoring training, we're creating an environment that um, allows enough safety that we can all show up with that what is in the way between what is your pure expression of yourself and what is the conditioning that you just bring on the table to survive and this surviving mechanisms all this shield and armors and protection they have a chance to be seen on the emotional mental and physical level and we will um, guide them through certain exercises to allow this shields and armors and protections to be expressed so when it comes to individual connection in the armoring and this is what i love mostly of it is kind of the foundational step of the armoring. This is why I'm so passionate about the consent work is there. It's just like giving myself into somebody else's hands and telling them what to do. So that I know, okay, I receive the treatment that I want and that my body and my, my emotions and my physical, everything needs. But then on another point, to save my sanity, I need to give myself into the hands of somebody else's expertise and trusting them to guide me in a place where I cannot put myself. And this is why it is so enriching and um, uh, beneficial being with other people in this place and in this space and um, uh, being part of a holistic expertise that allows us um, collectively to dive into that place of, if you want to say so, unity or your connection to God. So people have transformative experiences 
And this transformative experience that I have seen uh, hundreds of times in many, many trainings, this is when there is no shield and there is no armor and no protection needed that people can be in their expression of their divinity, so to say. There is one question here. How does the armoring differ from somatic body work or gestalt body work? Um, that's a really great question. And I guess that pretty much depends on the uh, dynamic, how somatic body work is um, conducted and how gestalt body work is conducted. And uh, so that the armoring way, and that goes as well in the other question that I've seen, how do we assess what a person needs? That's pretty much based on before it comes to a hand on body dynamic, it has a really an, an intake conversation uh, that uh, really goes into the depth about where that person is, what do they need, what is their story, what is their history, what is their trauma background, and so on and so forth. So um, to come back as well to that, what Sana said, there is no from A to B to C to D kind of structure in there. It's pretty much um, um, conducted in the way what is the... Um, um, intention of the person that is coming, what is their problem and what is their uh, desired outcome out of that. And uh, and this is pretty much based on um, who is working with whom, what would define literally the uh, individual session. And that's uh, nowhere written down how that can differ because it's individualized person by person. So this, the armoring training is the fifth or the sixth I'm teaching with you guys. And I've done similar trainings like that before, I think 14 or so. So I've done quite some stuff. But when we three come together, we have our own de-armoring retreat in the core. So it's just like it's just, it goes to the on, to the core of our souls <laughs> and our body on a cellular level. And it's not like we just show up and then we're just uh, checking boxes. We are there as, as long. I mean, I can say that only for myself, but I see you too as well for this five trainings I've done with you. We're, we're showing up in totality and I, this is what I can see from you too as well. And I'm really in awe and deeply honored to um, uh, coming back again and guiding people through their journey th by expressing ourselves in our journey and saying, hey, we are not finished products and we're going through a certain layer of the armoring every time again. And uh, we can only guide people as deep as we've gotten ourselves. So that comes with a deep commitment to show up for ourselves and, and, and being reflected and mirrored where we still have some work to do. If you just want to check out if this is for you and you would like to have a kind of a check in, there's a 200 euro deposit uh, to pay. You jump on a call, you just book a, a free slot in my calendar. And if you feel like, okay, that's it, you're in. And we say, yes, you're in. Then you can deduct this as a deposit. If we say, or you say, no, it's not the right thing. You will get your deposit back so that you can actually just check it out and have a conversation one and one to one with me to figure that out. I've heard from people who came second time or third time uh, repeating a training. They said just like, oh, my God, there was so much deeper. And this and this and this exercise, we have not done that last time. And then we said, yes, we have done that last time, but you don't have a memory of this. But this time you have the broadband actually to let it in and go on the next level of transformation. And, uh, and, and, you know, you, you, you will find more subtle nuances that you haven't seen before. And when you say you just like have now a job and you stop drinking, just imagine what is ahead of you now <laughs> that you don't know of yet. So there's always something to find. And that's true for me and for the other uh, two, Dan and Sana as well. When we're doing another training somewhere, you know, we find always new layers. You're never too old to start. Everything that you can find, it doesn't matter what the age is, is just a deeper level of liberation. And there were people, as far as I can remember, they were in their 60s and 60s. Um, I don't know what the oldest person was, but uh, I'm just amazed how older people 
um, doing that work on themselves. And, um, and there were people, uh, I remember, they were just like in the beginning of 20s or 19, I think was the youngest one. And I need to say, just like, I'm getting a little bit envy and jealous because I wished this would have been around when I was 18 or 19. I yeah. was, I would so have needed that, you know. I started my work um, when I was uh, uh, 29 or 28 or something like that. But the really de armoring on my body and the physical de armoring, I started that in my 40s, in my, in my early 40s. So it's never too late. And uh, just imagine where you can be in five years and 10 years when you just get all these blockages away and just jump into your truth and your authenticity and your expression. So um, it's age independent. Partly of this entire structure is, you know, um, radical self-care. Radical self-care is that um, um, listening to your body in the right way and not overwriting the impulses what your body tells you. And um, showing up with your gift is as well part of self-care. And I will post these two links again um, for everybody who is interested. Comes right now. Bang. To make a choice if you decided to jump in or if you just want to have conversation with me about if that's for you thanks for joining and uh, would love to see you in one or the other way bye, bye.